the second type of transformation that we want to look at today, or that we want to look at, is referring to vertical and horizontal reflections. Now, reflections are like a mirror. And when you look at transformation of reflection, really what you're doing is you're looking at, see, is it going to be reflecting over the x-axis, or is it going to be reflecting over the y-axis? Now, once again, just like rigid transformation, which actually reflections are, is that they do not change the shape of the graph, but simply move the graph. Now, how does it work when you have a reflection? Well, the key thing when you talk about reflections is that there's always going to be a negative involved. When you talk about a vertical reflection, which makes the y's different, all right, vertical refers to the y values, or the outputs, is that when you have a negative, that means you're changing all of the y values to the opposite. It does not affect the inputs. So, for example, when you have your set of data points and you have your graph right over here, okay, is that we are going to plug in our values. So when I plug in 0, I get out negative 1. However, the negative will be multiplied by another negative value, or the opposite, which will make it 1. We plug in 1, I get 0, well, the opposite of 0 is 0. Plug in 3, I get a 1, but it's the opposite, which would be negative 1. And then a 4, when I plug in, I get out the opposite of its original, which it would be negative 2. When I plot that, I have 0, 1. I have 1, 0, which is the same value. I have 3, negative 1. And I have 4, negative 2. When I connect those, I realize that what I have is because I changed and reflected over, or I changed the y values, this is actually a reflection of what we call over the x-axis, over the x-axis. So values that change the y are values that flip over the x-axis. Horizontal, all right, reflections, is when you have a negative. Once again, reflection means negative, or, or you should be synonymous with negative or opposite. Okay, in that when you have a negative that it's inside, well, it changes the y or x values, the x values. It changes your inputs, your horizontal, your inputs, your x values, your inputs. So, in this, what I have is, well, I plug in, all right, the value, but once again, my y values stay the same. However, how can I get these? Outputs, well, I need a certain group of inputs. So first off, when I have plug in 0, well, I plug in 0, I get 0. So there's no opposite of 0, so just be 0. And I get negative 1. Here, I have 1. Well, when I plug in 1, I actually have negative 1. Well, there is no set in my x that allows me to get a negative 1 because there's no y that is associated with that. So the only thing I have is positive 1. Well, what do I have to plug in in order to get a positive 1? Well, negative 1. Well, negative 1, I get out 0, because negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Then, in order to get 3, I actually need to plug in a negative 3, because negative 3 times negative 1 gives me positive 3, which will give me an output of 1. So, I have negative 3, 1. And then I have 4, I plug in a negative 4, which will give me 4, which will get out a 2. So, negative 4, 2. When I plot these, I realize that I have a reflection over the y-axis. The y-axis. So any reflection that messes with or affects the inputs or the x values is a reflection over the y because you're shifting horizontally, which is actually a reflection over the y. And in summary, any reflection that is over the x is actually you're changing the y values. So you have a negative outside the f of x. And that makes sense because if you change the y values, the y values are flipped over the x axis. I hope this helps about reflections over the vertical horizontal axis and those the final transformations that are rigid. Enjoy.